this is Rob Reinhold. And look at that. May is done. We are into June. I hope everyone is enjoying the better weather. And this is before it gets really hot in some places. But let's jump into the week. A lot happened this week. So let's talk about what happened this week. The markets did pull back. We pulled back and it was pretty much from Wednesday of last week. We had that big gap up on NVIDIA. And really since then, the market has been, I use the term soggy. It's been soggy and it was soggy all the way until about two hours before the close on Friday. And then a surge of buying came in. And at the end of the week, the week didn't look that bad. But we'll jump into it and we'll get into all the ins and outs of what happened this week because I think this week was definitely nothing more than a pullback. I said that on Thursday, but we'll have to wait and see if we get some confirmation. Pretty much every other market was, was pulling back. Gold and bonds were flat. Gold was down. And we heard from the Fed's, the Fed's favorite inflation number, the core PCE price index. You can see the headline number was as expected. The core number was less than expected. The market liked this at first. The markets gapped up on Friday and then sold off and sold off, sold off. And it was weak all day long. And I was actually quite surprised because I was expecting it to bounce off this news. Well, the market just had to get a little bit more selling out. And then it bounced up and closed positive by the end of Friday. So let's take a look at the final numbers when we closed up the market. We saw the Dow down 0.8%, S&P down a half a percent. Look at the difference between the Qs and the Russell. Russell was up for the week. The Russell was strong all week long. NASDAQ was weak all week long. Got pullbacks in oil and gold. But this, I really want to focus here on the charts because this week, like I said, I was a little bit surprised about Thursday's candle. And I was really surprised about Friday's early candle. So Thursday we broke through. And at the end of the day, we had this little shadow here pulling back to the 20. And I said, okay, if we hold the 20, that looks good. If not, we're going down to the 50. At one point, Friday was an ugly, ugly red day. It just was an ugly day. And I remember thinking like, wow, you know, everything that I've learned about charting, it's not coming to fruition. But look, remember, charting is just a percentage odds game. And it could have just been one of those times where it didn't work. But you can see by the end of the day, we got a huge pile of volume in by the end of the day. This is a very, very bullish candle. We almost got to the 20 day moving average, sorry, the 50 day moving average, and we recovered it so quick. So here is the big question. Are we going to make a new swing high? Are we going to break above these levels? I think there was enough technical damage done that I think it's going to be a while. I could be wrong, but I think this candle is a very, very salt candle telling us that this is still a bullish market. And if we come over here, take a look at the NASDAQ, it looks even better. The NASDAQ came and you can see briefly on Friday, we pierced through that support line, but we recovered it right away. I do think we'll trade up to this line here. I just don't know if we've got the power to break through it. Like ultimately, I think we will go higher, but I'm just looking at this week. Are we going to have that V recovery this week? That V move that just bounces and just keeps going? I don't think so. I think it's going to be a little bit more, you know, we go up a little bit, flat a little bit, up a little bit, hit our head against the level and spend a little bit more time basing. One of the things I really wanted to point out this week, and I pointed this out on Thursday, Thursday was a down day. 61% of stocks went up on Thursday. And I pointed that out in my end of day video. I said, look, I know we got to go off the charts, but the internals are telling you that this is not a huge sell-off. And we just saw intense selling in all the large cap tech. On Friday at our lows, I looked at the internals again. When we were at our lows, 52% of stocks were up. And I'm thinking to myself, man, the internals are showing that there's a lot of buying out there. But when you just took a look at the big cap tech, Apple, Microsoft, Google, they're all just getting hammered. And that is, take a look at these squares. That's why I really love this heat map. Take a look if those five stocks go down, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Apple, Google, Amazon, that's about 28% of the market. That's a huge drag on the market here. You throw in the semiconductors in here, 
I mean, now you're looking at like 31% of the market if that was are just down. The internals were showing us that they were still buying out there. That's why I never really bought into this. Oh my gosh, we're going to break. We're going to fall apart. But I got to say on Friday, I was wondering if I was just flat out wrong. Luckily, that bullish candle uh, brought us back up on Friday and everything looks okay again. Okay, that's it. It doesn't look great. It looks okay. I don't think we get any new highs for a week or two. I think we're going to spend some time in here consolidating, but I do think the most intense selling is over. Let's take a look at the calendar this week because we do have the Friday employment report. This is probably going to be the biggest news of the week. Earlier in the week, we get manufacturing. I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. The market has not moved on this. And you can see other than that, there's not a ton that's really going to move the market. I see that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are fairly quiet days with a big day on Friday. That's really what I'm looking at for this week. Let's take a look at the technical score of the market because we do have a score change. We were at plus three for two weeks. Um, we were all the way down to plus one yesterday. And by the end of the week, we're at a plus two. So it's not as bullish as we've been. So we're going to pare back the bullishness, but we're still going to be net bullish for sure. There was lots of movement in the sectors. Let's go check and see what the sectors did because this really is telling the story here. We take a look at the strongest sectors. The strongest sectors last week, we were at a plus three on utilities, comm services, and technology. Those were all plus threes. Now we saw the technology got crushed and that really came from the software names, Salesforce, Sentinel One Software, pretty much anything that made software, Dell Computer is now a software company. They got absolutely crushed. They're all down like 15, 20% off of their worse than expected earnings reports. That dragged technology down, but take a look at Utilities, they did great, up 1.7%. Comm services was positive. Real estate had a nice rebound. That was a negative two last week. It bounced up to, I think, a plus one. Energy is starting to show some signs of life. Everything else, pretty much muted. So outside of that technology sell-off, take a look. Erases technology, and you've got mostly an up story for this last week. Let's take a look at these on an individual basis. Give them a score from plus three to negative three. Utilities was a plus three. It pulled back, came back to the 20-day moving average and says, nope, I don't want to be here. I want to be up to the highs. You can see utilities look still fantastic here. I think you can still go ahead and buy utilities. Comm services, beautiful little base here. Plus three. No question that we've got a plus three. And look, we close at the high of the base breaking out. We've got some resistance back in here. Once we clear out of that, I don't see any reason why comm services doesn't lead this market higher as well, along with utilities. Real estate had a big, big pullback. You can see this big pullback it was pretty disastrous from here to here. And it started well before the market pulled back. We got a nice big bounce off the bottom. I'm not super excited because it pulled back so much. So we're going to stay to plus one on this one. Same thing with healthcare. Healthcare had a much bigger pullback than we saw in utilities and comm services, but it's between the moving averages, so it gets a zero. Zero on healthcare. Coming over here to industrials. Industrials also got absolutely crushed. This is one of the weakest sectors. Yes, it had a bounce back, but look, we're not back to our moving average yet. So we're at a negative one on industrials, financials, had a big pullback as well, not as deep as industrials. And they had a bounce back. So you can see that since it wasn't as deep, we're going to go with a plus one as it is clearly above the 50 day moving average at the 20. Next up, consumer. Now this is where the weakness is. This was, this never made new highs along with the market. And then when the market pulled back, it pulled back. And then it had this bounce. Remember the bounce we just saw over the last couple sectors? It bounced, but it wasn't great. Now, this is a very interesting sector because I was surprised. If you take a look at some of the individual stories in this sector, you take a look at a Dick's Sporting Good. You take a look at a Decker's Outdoors. 
there were some huge gainers in this sector, huge gainers. And the sector didn't really do anything this week. This is telling me that the weakest sector over the last couple of weeks has been consumers, we pointed out, and it continues to be consumer as the weakest sector for sure. Tech had a pullback. Tech went all the way down to the 50-day moving average, but recovered. So we're going to give that a plus one in technology. We've got materials here. Pulled back as well. Broke below its 50, but it recovered it very quickly. And now it's trading above the 50. So we'll give that a plus one. And here we have energy has crawled its way back, but still isn't back solidly above that 20 moving average. So we've got a negative one. But take a look. Nice move. Nice move here on that Friday. Some buying really came into energy on Friday, uh, up 2.5% just on Friday. That was the majority, that was actually all of its gain and more because it was up 2% for the week. This is where we were last week. Tech, comm services, utilities, the best. Real estate, energy, consumer, the worst. We got a little bit of a downgrade in industrials. Real estate, got a little upgrade. Tech weakened and energy strengthened a bit. So you can see here, this is where we are. Consumer healthcare slid down. So we've got a lot of stuff in the middle. Real estate, materials, tech, financials, a little bit bullish. Healthcare, neutral, energy, industrials, a little on the weekend. And you can see it's clear what is outperforming. Comm services and utilities on the upside and consumer on the downside. So let's talk about where we are on our trade slots. Remember, we are bringing this in from the trading collective. We had about 13 trades last week and we had, I believe, uh, five roll off. Now we had six roll off. So we had stuff rolled off in consumer. We had a trade in Cody for a nice gain. Uh, we had some nice sideways stuff that came in really nicely. And you can see we've got some holes available here. We've got lots of places we can make trades. We already determined the market is a plus two. So at a plus two market, this is going to be our capital allocation. This is what we are allowed to have. We're allowed to have only one plus three. So we can only like swing for the fence on one trade. We can be pretty aggressive on four with a plus two. We can be mildly bullish for four and you can see three, two, one. So one, four, four, three, two, one is our slots that we can fill. These ones in the black are already slots that are filled. So we've decided, okay, let's put a trade in healthcare. Healthcare is a zero. Let's put a zero trade in healthcare. We're also going to do a zero in energy. Materials, we're going to do a negative one. Consumer is our weakest, so we're going to do a negative two. And technology, we had no nothing in technology, so we're going to put it in a plus one. We could have done a plus two or a plus three, but this is where you get to decide how bullish you want to be. I'm not ready to like put my pedal back in the on the metal. I'm ready. I'm ready to just okay. Let me put on some more sort of bulls here, but you can see here, I've already got a lot of bulls working in utilities and comm services. Those are doing great. So I really have some, some slots down here that I need to fill to really round off my portfolio and make it to where I think it should be to match the market. So we've identified the slots that we're going to fill. So let's find those trades that are going to fill those potential slots. First up in healthcare, we read a zero. On healthcare, we want to look for a zero trade. We decided to allocate that. Here we have Edwards Life Sciences. So we're looking at a butterfly with the 8750 strike as the midpoint. So 8250, 8750, 9250. This is the butterfly that we're looking for. So basically, we need it to close within this range. And we're looking at the June 21st. So that's three weeks away. We have flattening moving averages. We have no new highs, no new lows. This is what you want to look for in the sideways play. You could take a look at a horizontal spread as well, an 8750 horizontal spread. But as I pointed out last week, the horizontal spreads, now you got to worry about changes in volatility, where with the butterflies, you really don't have to worry about that at all. Right, our next slot we wanted to fill. was in the consumer sector. 
And the consumer sector was our most negative one. We're looking for a negative two. Now these are my favorite trades. I love trades like this. Now we call this the March of Death. And if you take a look at VF Corp, they've been doing the March of Death where they literally probably were at $30 a year ago. And every time they rally, they just fall apart. And we call this the March of Death. And what you wanna do is you want to be shorting on rallies. You wanna be shorting on bases. You wanna be shorting rallies. You wanna be shorting, you wanna be shorting when it break below basis. They had some news on Friday after a really poor earnings report that the one of the uh, directors or one of the management from Lululemon is going to now come and work for VF Corp. The stock jumped like 12, 15% on that news. I love taking these opportunities. When it's really not news that's going to change the story dramatically, and as long as it hangs out right around this 50, I'm very happy to get into this trade. So for me, these are the ones I love. It was an $11 stock, and now it's a 14 well, $13 stock. That is a 20% jump. I'd love to be able to get into these March of Death stocks after they jump 20%. So I'm looking my chops on this one. I like this. This is the one I'm looking to put on the June 7th. Very short term. I want to get in and out of this one down to the 1250. So you can see this is not super aggressive here. We're just saying, hey, we think it's going to go below 1250 by Friday. I don't see any reason why that is not a reasonable target on VF Corp. Next up in tech, we want it to be a plus one in tech. So we took Microsoft. Now look. This is what we want in a plus one trade. And let's really think about plus one. We're going to do a trade that is mildly bullish, where it literally does not have the opportunity to make a lot of money. There's no reason for us to buy a NVIDIA, a SMCI, anything that's going to just take off because we won't get paid for it at a plus one. A plus one, you're basically saying, I just want to make sure you don't go lower. So that is the play here. That is the play. The stock's at 415. The 410, 415 basically saying, hey, you know what? I think Microsoft over the next two weeks is going to be the same place or higher. That's the bet. That's the bet off of this hammer candle that it's going to be the same place or higher. There's going to be somewhere up in here. We don't expect it to run up to 440. We don't even care if it goes above. We just want it above 415. Now, look, if you want to be a little bit more bullish, the 415, 420, that's a very reasonable play here for a two-week trade. Just saying, hey, I just want you to go above 420, and that's going to be a nice max gain for me on Microsoft. In the material sector, we're looking to place a negative one trade. So we're looking for something that is, it doesn't need to be dropping. Remember, you don't need to see a huge drop when you're looking to play these plus ones and negative ones. We just need to see something that is likely to stay weak. We came down to the moving averages. We broke below. And this is what I like, a red candle on Friday. The market was solidly up on Friday at the end of the day. This one just had a little lower candle. The play is not all that aggressive. You're not asking this thing to do much. We're only doing a negative one trade. So two week, be below 120. So 120, 124. You could even do a 121 124 to be even wimpier. That would be absolutely acceptable. Not asking things to move much. And last, let's take a look at our trade in energy. Energy was at a negative one. We're doing a zero trade on this. Um, Halliburton. Halliburton. Here are the highs. Here are the lows. The extreme highs, the extreme lows. But for the most part, this stock has been hanging out in this area over the last, let's call it six months. There's no reason to think it's going to break out and make a new run to the 40s. There's also no reason to think it's going to break down below 34. We're just looking to place a sideways trade right here in the middle. So we're looking at the 35, 37, 50, 40. So this is mildly bullish. This is really like a plus 0.5, meaning we, we do want it to go up to 37.50. That's going to be our max gain point, but really it just needs to hang out in this area over the next two weeks to earn us some money. All right, those are the trades I have for you. If you have some trades you want to share with the rest of the Maverick group, you know where to go. 
log into the members area at maverickshooting.com. Go to the forum. Let's get that chatter going. Love to see that. Wrapping this up, the market is bullish. It's mildly bullish. It's not as bullish as it was two or three weeks ago. We have to downgrade that. We have to be more realistic. I don't think we're going to make new highs in the next week or two. I could be wrong. But I also think that selling that we got, I think that selling got a lot of the negative, sorry, it got a lot of the over exuberance out of the market. And again, that's what pullbacks are all about, everybody. Pullbacks are about it got too hot. It got too excited. People got too optimistic. And we need to take that out of the market. Right now, 50% of stocks are above the 50-day moving average. 50% are below. We've, we've got that out of the market. That doesn't necessarily mean the market's going to get in a good mood again. But what it does say is that, okay, we weathered this storm. We got some selling into the market. The market held technically. People are going to be more likely to come back in the market now because it's not as hot as it was. We took some of that pressure out of the market to where people now can look at this market and say, hey, I feel better about getting in today than I did two weeks ago because two weeks ago was just too hot. Now it's cooled off a bit. I like where it is. There is still some weakness in tech, software, and consumer. That is where the weakest pockets are. Just avoid those or, or go look for your shorts in those. Other than that, I think the market looks like a solid plus one, plus two market. I think there's plenty of opportunity. Thanks for joining me. Everyone have a great weekend. Take care. Oh, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the,